She bought this property in 1912. She moved into this home in the spring, February of 1914. She was already leaving by 1918. So if you look at what she did, you know, you mentioned how incredibly talented she was. On this particular property, she built this home. She built the garden shed. She made a 35-bed formal garden with a 120-foot-long arbor. She created this beautiful putting stone um, spring surround and the owl pillars up front with those beautiful Bedford limestone owls. She did all of that in about five to six years. But in 1918 or so, she was transitioning and all these books, her personal library, were shipped out to California. Jeanette, actually, her daughter, donated them to the State Historic Site if we would agree to pay for shipping. And um, so her entire library cost the state of Indiana, I think, $16. Yeah. You know, to ship them from California to uh, Indiana to be part. So the books that I'm going to show you to begin with, uh, since Dennis isn't here, this is actually um, a geography book. So it's, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, Gnotes Geographical Series uh, for Intermediate Geography. And it's a third grade book. <laughs> this is what third graders would have used to learn um, the lay of the land here. And what's really interesting is that there's a note. This book belongs to Mark Stratton, but lent to his daughter. <laughs> so you lent this book to uh, Jean, but obviously didn't want to turn ownership over to her. And then you can also see uh, Mr. Alva Taylor, uh, who's another relative that used the book as well. And the reason why I bring this out is that Jean's name went through a kind of a series of changes. It's, she was born Geneva Gray Stratton. And then, but generally when she was growing up, um, people in her family called her Geneve. And then when she moved to Geneva, because her name was Geneva and the town's name was Geneva, she legally changed her name to Jean. And she hated the name Geneva. So um, I guess that was one way to get on her bad side. But, <laughs> but the really interesting thing, so you have to keep in mind, this is a third grade geography book. And right here, in very faint type, this is Geneva Stratton. So she wrote that when she was eight to nine years old. And to my knowledge, it's the only thing that we have that's ever signed Geneva Stratton. Like I said, this is her personal library, and this is where she acquired all of her knowledge. And in her library are books from Darwin and Muir and Burroughs and Thoreau. And not Rachel Carson, she wasn't a time traveler. <laughs> but uh, but uh, we do have also another really important book here is Enos Mills. And he's kind of uh, considered the father of North American uh, uh, natural interpretation. And uh, Gene Stratton Porter and Enos Mills were pretty good friends. And inside, um, there's actually an inscription from Enos says Mrs. Jean Stratton Porter with best wishes of Enos A. Mills. So it's kind of interesting because we were talking about contemporaries earlier and uh, I'll cost you a million dollars. <laughs> um, she was a contemporary of these people who were uh, really at the forefront of natural history interpretation and the conservation movement and things like that. So it's just really amazing that there, we had a book, you know, That's so cool. <laughs> proving that they knew each other. And we have a letter as well um, where he's actually thanking Gene Stratton Porter for sending her one of, uh, sending him one of her books. And he said, I'll send you one of mine. And that's you it. You know what book was? Uh, not off the top of my head, I don't. And I don't think it's named uh, in the letter itself. Was um, a friend of Robert to leave to Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got a picture of the two of them together. This is uh, what's kind of interesting to me. It's called an Australian bird book, and outside of the U.S., she had a following in England and Scandinavian countries, you know, Middle Eastern countries, yeah. and you can see that obviously Australia as well. And what's really very wonderful about this book is that if you open it up, 
It says, with an Australian bush girl, sincere thanks. <laughs> and it says, Main Creek, NSW for New South Wales, 21-2, which is February 21st of 1917. Again, it's really interesting to see how she influenced people, not only the common ordinary people, but other authors as well. And that is why I have this book out, uh, Dennis uh, Mitch and John Muir. And what's really interesting, there's a lot of uh, misconception about Dean Stratton Porter and her relationship with Charles. And I've heard the term of Victorian divorce, and people seem to think that they didn't get along very well. And that's why she lived up here, and he lived down there. And I think um, I can only say this from kind of a, a speculative nature, but I have a feeling that because Charles was so amazingly successful, being a pharmacist and a banker and a hotelier and having a 650-acre horse farm, he was very, very landlocked. Uh, he couldn't leave Geneva and all of the success and, and things that he had uh, built up over the course of his lifetime. And he knew that Jean needed to have the wild, uh, untamed uh, spaces. Once Linda lost had been drained, she had no inspiration for her books. So I think they had a very, very strong relationship and that he and her um, kind of said, you know, you do your thing and I'll do mine. And he came up to visit her quite a bit here and he went out to visit her in California as well. And to kind of, because I kept hearing this Victorian divorce thing, uh, when I came across this book, I was really excited because it's a book uh, by John Muir, uh, the story of boyhood and youth. And inside is a doily for a chocolatier in Chicago. And it says to Jean from quote unquote dad, 8-17-18. And her nickname for Charles was dad, and was also the deacon. And so apparently on her birthday, he got her a book by her favorite author and a box of chocolates. That does not speak to a Victorian divorce to me. So I love this book. This other book is um, uh, one by Darwin, actually. Mm -hmm. Just again to kind of prove Venice's point about you know the the people that she drew her her knowledge base from. And then the last book um, I love as well because it's it's written by a gentleman by the last name of uh, Kutchner. And um, Gene Stratton Porter wrote a wonderful book called What I Have Done With Birds. And it was a nature study, and it was all about um, the things that she had done when she was studying the birds of the area. And Mr. Kutchner wrote a book because he was directly influenced by her called What Birds Have Done With Me. <laughs> <laughs> and inside, again, is a wonderful inscription. It says, Gene Stratton Porter, always your friend, Victor Kutchner. So it's, it's wonderful to me to be in the position when you hear about history, when you read about it and everything, but you can put your hands on it. You can see that all those things that people have written over time are really true because you've got it right here. And this is the thing I wish we would be able to do a little bit more, but because all objects have a quote unquote lifespan, um, you have to be very, very careful. Uh, but because of the family connection and things like that, I think it's very important that you see these things, again, to deepen that connection with who your uh, family was and the types of influence, uh, an amazingly wonderful and positive influence she had on her peers and, and, and the common people. Is there one part of that coming apart there? Yeah, and, and that's that's like I said, that's why you you handle them as little as possible. Yeah. Um, and nobody did push back in. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the, the special artifact uh, part of the, the tour today was to, to show you some some things that rarely come out of the, the shelves and uh, um, again to kind of show you uh, the types of things, almost like when we went to uh, Levina's farm uh, to show you the types of things that influenced and, and made Jean Stratton Porter the person that she was.